It's a beautiful Monday on your view. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afolabi Brown. As always, I never do this alone. I have the ladies with me. Hello. Excellent it's morning. Monday morning. It's an amazing Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Monday morning. <laughs> anyway, let's go on a break. When we come back, it's Monday. That was funny. <laughs> so much stuff to talk about in the papers. Elections all the way. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, let's start with the punch because I like it starting with the punch. <laughs> APC's Ganduje Lalong win, PDP's Tambua Autumn re elected. Police arrest 77 for cult clashes, killings in Aja. Hmm. Plato woman demands justice for siblings molested by her neighbor. Foreign investors withdraw 55 billion naira from stock markets in February, says Nigerian Stock Exchange. Fire destroys over 20 houses, many shops in Lagos. 13 billionaire equity cash, EFCC declares ex NIA DG or okay, care wife wanted. Makinde vows to review Ajimobi's last minute contracts. And Yoruba elders write Buhari on true federalism as Igbo leaders insist on restructuring. Okay, let's take the fire. Okay, the fire the story. Else. So um, the fire inc incident happened in mile, mile 12. Uh, there's this particular lady who was cooking with her stove, but then the stove caught fire, and it, uh, she just threw the stove out, <coughs> and it caught on a, a passerby with a keg of fuel, mm. and that just escalated everything. About 20 houses Ooh. raised down. Most of the houses were built with uh, woods, and then residents are saying that uh, one of the reasons the fire escalated was the fact that a lot of them put f um, fuel kegs yes. in their home sure. for selling. They sell them in the area, and most times police comes to raid that place, and then they tip them, and they go away. So they have, they've not been able to eradicate that, and that's one of the reasons the fire oh, got out of hand. We just have to be careful yeah. with how we keep our fuel. This 13 and 11 year old were uh, being abused by a 54 year old James mm -hmm. Utunoke and they took it to the police station um, Anglo Just Division Police Headquarters had to get involved because they were already trying to cover up by saying that James is sick he should be released and the man got um, the the the, the the, the neighbor, because I, I, for me, that's the hero of this story. The neighbor that saw that small children were going into an older man's house consistently and suspected and held those girls mm. down to ensure that they confessed that, what are you doing in this man's house? Mm. She's not their parents. She's just a neighbor that noticed something going mm. on. And she's been on this case not to let wow. the man you know, get fantastic. out of justice. That's so I, I wish we, we, we should be our brother's keepers. <coughs> we should observe mm. and right. act on it. But right. I'm happy that this business. has been. And mm. the, the fact that the girl has a, a STD. She's actually. Yeah, they, they Two of them. Oh they actually God. have an oh, they have, they have, they've, they've, they've gotten STDs from this man. So we, they, they, we must follow up on this case. And I'm happy that Punch is re repeating the story right. so Which that we great. know what's going on. Let's move on now to the nation. <clears throat> Autumn Lalong Ganduji Tambua win elections. Yoruba elders give Buhari shopping lists. My vision for ninth Senate, says uh, Lama Lawan. And nurses arrested for selling baby. I have that story, but let's go ahead with the nurses' story. So um, the two nurses, um, their names quickly were arrested at St. Miron. They work at Trinity Clinic, Miron. And the two of them, Mrs. Mabel Onochel and Dr. Somitogu, allegedly sold somebody's baby for 350000 hey. So they, they, um, one of them runs a traditional birth um, place where women come. And when she delivered this baby, <coughs> she told the mom that the baby was a stillbirth and that she had buried because she, mm. she wants to save the family the trauma. But like um, families like mine who <laughs> must bury mm. yeah. such babies mm. according to, to certain the rights demanded that baby. And then they, she found a story and said the head wasn't well formed. Uh, it just didn't look good. That's hey. They insisted and brought in the police and then there was a confession of so oh who they sold Lord. the baby. So they caught a third party who they had sold the baby to. And that one said she's been... Um, having fibre, she didn't have a child, so she wanted to buy a child. The Yoruba Council of Elders, well, was elders. came together <laughs> and wrote a letter to our president asking specifically for not just restructuring, but they're asking for the, um, the strengthening of the various regions, saying that let us generate revenue and then pay a percentage to the centre, maybe to the, for the defence, immigration. These, are, these, are, these have been the blueprints yes. for a long time. Yes. You know, and they're, 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 uh, but also the Indigo, leaders and Igbo leaders mm -hmm. also we are we are meeting with the leaders uh, leaders of the Indigo uh, Ohanes Indigo, Ohanes Indigo. And they also said they wanted devolution of powers. They, wasn't, they, weren't, they weren't really specific on what exactly they wanted, they wanted but it. they just knew they wanted restructuring, restructuring. and they wanted the leaders to ensure mm. that uh, Nigeria is restructured. 
for these people because of all the time. So two different people. Mm. Two sets mm. and we have them focusing on the leadership all the time. And this leadership will still, whatever proposal they have, will refer to the National Assembly. Why not talk to National your representatives within the National Assembly? Because ah. we know the kind of government we operate. Mm -hmm. Let them be proposing it on the floor. When they were trying to amend the other time, yes. and they, they took out that, this one. You know, put them under put the pressure, pressure on them. Under them, exactly. And, you know, let the pressure go on media and everybody saying yeah. that these people are refusing to, not, not, a lot of people have a few, they're getting big money. People also need so to be specific on what, what they, want, they want, exactly. Because you they just you. mentioned it the structure, mm. it was really, but really Right in the the president is not going to steal the problem. Which yeah, is what you yeah, just saying. Yeah. Go we have to representative, and yeah. if, the, if these groups can come together, working together is more important than even the president can know how to go and number these people. Yes. Is these people that will say they mm -hmm. veto or they don't? Uh, okay, let's move to New Telegraph very quickly. Tambua Autumn survived APC's onslaught. Kanduje wins Kano. Mm -hmm. Saraki PDP plot to install Goje as Senate president. Lack of quality sleep raises the risk of heart attack and stroke. Uh, <laughs> Southeast leaders post election Igbo agenda. Makine vows to probe Ajimobi's 300, no, 30 billion post-election contracts. And banks plan to freeze corporate accounts without directors mm. BVN. And why Jimmy Agbaje was beaten black and blue by APC, says Bode Joy. So very interesting Ayibani, article. You should, Ayibani, I would actually advise everybody to read that article. It's pretty interesting. Um, Ayibani, the elder statement Bode Joy was talking about how APC um, beat uh, Jimmy Agbaje. He's, he was saying that. Jimmy Jaji actually did not come to the leaders of the party mm. to get the support. He was running support. by himself. But there was a word out there that, 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 that the party doesn't really have a same. Let's move on very quickly to the Nigerian Tribune. Which story have we not taken? Let's take, oh, Nigerian ranks next to India mm. in mm. open defecation, yes. says Lockdown. Minister. Mm. Uh, $43 million Ikoyi apartment cash. EFC declares Ayo, okay, and his wife wanted. An alleged serial killer, four others arrested in Lagos. Okay, has a so story. Yes, the Minister of Water Resources, Suleiman Adamu, has said that uh, we still rank second mm -hmm. um, compared to India is first and we are second in the open defecation. So he's, mm -hmm. they're already making plans to see how that can stop in 2035 uh, so that we don't, we try as much as possible to avoid defecating outside. We have to move on to Vanguard. Tension in Kano as Ganduja wins. Okay, let's take the story we've not taken. Mm -hmm. No rates between Samuelu and Ambode. Hmm. I wish my husband's cabinet would have 41.6% women, says Aisha Buhari. My survival in helicopter crash, evidence of God's mercy on me. FG plots fresh charges against Onogem. And EFCC declares I okay, former NIA boss wife wanted. So mm -hmm. our president's wife is saying that um, she wishes, if wishes were horses, that her husband's <laughs> cabinet would have 41% uh, women and that, and that she was saying that at the, the Tony Elumilu Foundation it was linked to the fact that the Tony Elumilu Foundation had 41.6 percent women um, participating right. in yeah. that pro program. So it was like if you can have 41.6 percent women participating in the program, I wish also that we have this same number of women, women involved. It's, a, it's, a, it's in a huge burden. We don't have that. I mean, even in the house, mm. even the Lagos State House of Assembly, mm. it, was, it was really painful to know. I, mean, I think it was only three or four. As, as, well, as active as Lagos, Lagosian, Lagos women are, as educated as Lagosian and Lagos women are. Are they coming out? That's another they, issue. They, they, Muraya, we've had some that came here. One of the reasons I was, one of the reasons I was pinned far. that OBS as a question, they did not go ahead. Because that would have been like a precedent. Mm. Even if you go well, and you don't get it. There was a woman already. We had women. 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 We need more women. No, no, no. Not just to contest. I mean, I, thought, I think she meant, you know. No, not just about the contestant. She should have just, you know, continued. And that would have encouraged a lot of other women to All right. So no room to teach on Wolo and on with the spokesperson was saying that there was no issue. I don't think the election. But they were saying that they admit that Wolo has not gone to visit anybody yet. But he should have. But they know that there's no rift, yeah. Mm. So we are waiting. Yeah, but we, we should not visit our governor. Now. Maybe he's this planning week, don't a worry. grand visit. At least, yeah, it's been nice. <laughs> it's been nice. Just to show that there's no issue. Yeah. It's been nice. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll discuss your thoughts on the supplementary elections that just happened this Saturday. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. So due to the inconclusive elections that was held on the 9th of March, INEC proposed supplementary elections, which held just last Saturday. On the show today, we're going to be discussing everything elections surrounding the uh, supplementary elections that just concluded and everything around it. We have with us 
the APC Publicity Secretary, Lagos Chapter, Mr. Joe Igokwe. Welcome to the show, sir. Welcome, sir. Thanks for you can me. call us on 0708066814. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. All right, so hmm. This after the elections. Let's start with that. Um, it's, like, it's like we went back to status quo. Um, kind of got, got the incumbent came back. Uh, they just said the same thing. Uh, I think Bauchi is there going to court, I believe. Mm. Um, in your own overview, the numbers were still close. If you look at Kano State, for example, the numbers, I think, were just about 8,000 votes difference, over a million plus votes. Um, and we saw those numbers replay itself in Lagos State. There were a few other states where the numbers were quite close. Do you feel the end is imminent for APC, generally? <laughs> it can never be. This is democracy. This is the first time we are practicing what is called free and fair process, okay. free and fair elections. You would have using your, if, if we are to be PDP, we would have using the power of incumbency and muzzle everybody out and write figures. That's what we've been seeing for years. For years. And um, thank God for this government. You know, people will not say it, but we are saying it. Do you think that the people of Kano State wanted the incumbent to come back? One. Number two, if they did, why was the difference so much? It was about a million, you know, votes that they were looking for, looking at, at the major elections for the governorship before the supplementary happened. Well, um, you see, I will respect the people of Kano. I will praise them for their, you know, for their understanding of um, politics, you know. Um, you know, the governor had this... Um, dollar exactly. dollar something background you know exactly. that you know attended to bring down his um, popularity. popularity you know but it does not remove the fact that the man did wonderful work in Kano State. But do you did you did wonderful. you see the tape and do you do you think he actually collected I, I, I saw the tape. I, I I didn't believe the tape. Oh you didn't believe the tape? I didn't believe the tape. Oh you know, wow. Me personally I right. don't believe the tape because okay. anything can happen. This government is known to fight corruption. I mean, that's what our president is supposed to be known for, a man mm -hmm. of integrity. <clears throat> People felt that the least he could have done mm -hmm. is to acknowledge, I started acknowledging about the tape, but ensure some kind of investigation, even though he comes out innocent. Mm -hmm. But the body language of the president did not show that they really, really wanted to investigate and ensure that one of their own was not guilty of this alleged crime. Well, he must have known what I know too. Okay. What, 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 what do you know, sir? Doctor? Maybe, doctor. maybe uh, just a, a, fig, a figment of the imagination of okay. those who are playing hey. those things. Rivers, we always know as being a keg of gunpowder. Like yes, it could, so every, four years. every election is always going bad. Yet, INEC, knowing that this is a major flashpoint, militarized it. With the, even with the military presence, we still haven't had a conclusion on the entire process till now. My experience about Rivers is that we have not been having elections in that state since 1999. They just mm. write results. Some people say it's mm. the entire country. It's not the entire country. I've been in Lagos, so I know what is going on here. We go to vote, but in Rivers, they don't go to vote. They will just write results. Don't forget, in 2003, Odili was the first person to, to bring out the result of the elections and put down 2,300,000 two, two, two votes. If you want to do election properly in Rivers, it will take you two weeks to collect the result. Because apart from Port Harcourt, you other neighboring, neighboring villages, you have to use boat to go to that place. This is what Creeks. The whole of South South, even Southeast. I'm telling you. Okay, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Mr. Igbokwe. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. Um, I know you wanted to start. Go ahead. Yes. So, um, sir, in Plateau State, Senator Jeremiah Osenio rejected the results and he said he's going to meet them in court. The same way in Sokoto that uh, Tambua's victory was rejected. How do we get to a point where we just accept the results right. of democracy? Right. Trust the process. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, I just because... Um, they are saying all this because um, APC is not PDP. 
we didn't go to apply the weight of the federal government to, to win that election. You know, after the elections, the pre president said, okay, it's not um, go and vote whoever, is you, mm -hmm. whoever you want to be. So she don't do that. But that's how we democracy don't like the idea. Is. No, we didn't like it. You have to go and play the politics. Oh. We had expected, I personally, expected that the president would go to all the states to campaign again for his party. That's why, that's what is giving these people, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, giving them a chance to say what they are saying. Where they win, they tell you, oh, it's a free and fair process. Where APC, where they will tell you, oh, they stole, they, 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 they did this, you know. Let, let's move to our show for a second. Not, because we couldn't be going for that second ballot, you know. Let's but, move to our show for a second. I'll come to you, Nima. Mm -hmm. your, your party is on the verge of possibly losing Oshun because obviously um, on Friday, the tribunal declared that Adeleke actually won. won. Um, how does that sit with you and your party? Because the possibility, because Southwest supposed to be a stronghold of the APC. For some reason, it's slipping through your hands. Mm -hmm. How does that sit with you? We knew what happened in Oshun. Okay. Certain things that we were supposed to do that we did not do that brought us to where we are. It's not because I think we still did not perform. An infrastructure governor, he did a lot and opened up that state, but something went long. You didn't pay my mother in law. Party, her, her party, money. party members, the party members that left the party were not managed very well, and that's why we had a close, that close, you know, encounter, so that close result. Well, the judges said they had three of three of them. They said, well, um, the, the INEC officials had no right to 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 remove votes, you know. Or to add votes. This is how it is. Mm. The, mm. Uh, the presiding officer mm. has the powers to declare an area mm. inconclusive mm -hmm. and, or to, to, to cancel an election in the areas where they are presiding. Mm. But they defer that right, that power, to the rector, the um, returning electoral officer for the mm. state to do, which was Ultraviolet's powers. They, say is, they, now remove, they now remove those results exactly. and, and so announce the what, removed it from the official mm. result. Exactly. And they said, Let's get to the appeal court and probably to the Supreme Court and see what is going to happen. Whether, whether they had the powers, the judges had the powers to do what they did. Hmm. But these people are, re are restricted by the Electoral Act and they are going by that in the You mean judges. the judges? Yes, the let's, tribunal. Let's what I'm because we saw voter apathy across many states. People just didn't go out. People didn't trust that their votes were going to count. We have registered voters of 7 million and you'll be having, like in the case of Lagos, Two, per, two million people voting, less than two million, about one million people voting. How do we get to the point where people that register actually show up to vote? You cannot, because of our level of civilization, you know, you can may not, people just go to register to have it. In case if it goes to register the, the child at school, they will say, okay, we bring their voters card. You just do. Maybe some, there's some of, the process. Yeah, some of them also feel that, oh, this thing can be valid, I don't want to die. Mm. <laughs> they would just stay at home. Some people would have moved. Some people don't want to face the rigors. Mm. Like we go in, in the election day, we spend almost a day. Some people don't have that kind of time. They, they won't even come. Mm -hmm. um, the president has been advised to ensure that the zone um, the Senate presidency to the southeast um, to show fairness, to show that we're together. Do you agree with that? Do you think it's rightfully should come to the southeast at this time? Well, it should be for balancing act okay, okay. and then for the sake of unity of this country. You know, at a time you should not be talking about numbers, but it's for the sake of unity of this country, you know. If you take Canada, for instance, Canada, it's French speaking people in Canada, 10% of that population is producing the Prime Minister of Canada, the President of Canada, just for the sake of unity of that country. Because you need to protect the minority. Right. Mm. You need to protect the minority. You need to do the default to take care of the minorities. So don't be thinking about game of numbers. If you look about it, get, if you look at the game of numbers, it will not be in the picture. No, we don't have enough PDP, uh -huh. um, I mean, APC that's, senators that's from what that we're zone. Saying, you know, that's why people like us, we're saying that even though people will look at it, okay, for the sake of na national unity, but you really need to play the politics. Mm. If we know, or if we knew that we are going, that this is what is at stake, right. what prevents our people, right. our politicians, to say, look, even though we know that our son is on the ballot, Peter, right. let us also go to the other side and present somebody that's been a, a two-timer or third-timer mm. in this, in case if it goes the other way. So what is your party, what can your party do to, to, further, to ensure that our governors are properly equipped to actually serve 
and not just amass wealth. No, that's why I like this uh, APC government. You cannot, many people will not believe it, but this is the first time, this is the first time we're having a government that is delivering services to the people. Hmm. And I think you need somebody on top. You know, initiatives, right. Initiative must come from the one who is sitting as the person, right. and then it flows down. Okay. So, the moment you have that property in the system, the first, the highest level, right. it will just flow down. You, you grant this money, and you come with a big stick. Mm. That this is what you must do with this money. The, the, the president must have control. Mm. If you don't have control, the president should advise, and then set up, have a committee that will monitor yeah. these things. They may not have the power to stop the government, but at least they can give right. reports. Let's take mm. a few tweets, please. Um, Nima, start. Okay, Babangida says, there are a lot of us who don't have basic amenities, and we're talking about voting electronically. The telecom industry is worse, and even in the cities, we complain of bad network. Till we do things right, let us forget these things you are talking about. Talking about us saying we for, you know, make elections easy. Ogbeni Caesar says, when you go through Twitter, you see PDP praising INEC whenever they win, but shouting democracy is in danger anywhere they lose. Eh, he says, praying is cool, but he's okay, they're talking to me. <laughs> Sif says, anyone that says the 2019 general election was free and fair is a problem to this country. <laughs> that Joe Ibokwe are setting this country back. Premium Home said, can Joe Ibokwe swear with his conscience that this election was free and fair? There was voter apathy mainly because people have lost confidence in the electoral umpire. Go ahead, take right. one Momak says, apart from the dollar attached, Ganduje really tried for the people of Kano, and I believe was he deserved the second term. was giving them term. Indomie, sorry, sorry, noodles and... Yeah, right. and Twitter, Twitter, anyway, anyway, let, let me have a, let me let you have a final word, because I have to close up this segment. The, the people can say anything. We have not said that this is a perfect exercise. You can never okay. have a perfect exercise. But where I voted, I was there physically. There was nothing, there was nothing anybody could do to change the situation. I was there alive. And if people go to do the same in their polling booths, I think we'll get better. Okay. We'll get better. Let's but that. don't dismiss what happened the last elections. You mm -hmm. know, if you know the resources, human, both human and material resources, then we are put in place to make right. it work. It's people it. like us that don't allow it yeah. to work. People who have much. ulterior motives and those who want to circumvent the system <laughs> that will tell you, oh, it's not working. When it favors them, right. it works. Right. When right. it does not favor them, it does not work. Well, thank oh, you very that, much, that, sir, that, for that, coming. That. We appreciate you being on the show today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, ladies. Thank um, you for being in the midst of these great oh, women. You had it easy today, trust me. We <laughs> have a plan for you, but unfortunately, we have to go on a break. Uh, we told you about a one-on-one -on -one segment, which I'll be launching. When we come back, I had a chat with the Honorable Minister of Power, Housing and Work. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So I had a one-on-one -on -one with the Honorable Minister of Power, Housing and Works. I was curious about his views on the imminent cabinet shakeup and the intoxicating influence of incumbents. We also touched on his relationship with Governor Amber Day. You don't want to miss this. Watch. Welcome to Your View with Moriah. On this segment, I have with me the Honorable Mis Minister for Power, Works and Housing and the former Governor of Lagos State, Honorable Babatunde Raji Fashola. Welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. First, I'd like to say congratulations to you and your party for successful elections. How did that make you feel? Well, it's done and dusted, so we're back to work. Um, we all worked hard, uh, all members of the party, the leadership, the planning committee, and everybody. And uh, right. um, it's all behind us now, Fantastic. and I think that it's good to get back on track too. Right. Sir, we heard that there's an imminent cabinet shakeup, and that the president is likely to let go of many of the ministers. If you are affected, is there a particular ministry you'd like to serve or do you think you'd retain your job as Minister of Power Housing? So, uh, these are matters of extreme speculation and I don't indulge myself in, in such matters. This is the prerogative of the President. So let's deal with his decision rather than agonize over how he exercises his but Let me say that people have said you have a way with words and you're a good communicator that you might be good as a Minister of Information and Culture. Do you think that would be something that fits? Your profile? Look, I won't agonize 
myself about the president's prerogative. Okay. Let him exercise his powers and we'll deal with it thereafter. Let me go into the issue of public service because um, the recent elections brought to four again why lots of governors and incumbents forced to retain power at all costs or try to have anointed candidates. We saw it at your time. We were told that, oh, your anointed candidate at the time was that was uh, Shasuri. And now we saw in Imo State, Governor Korocha saying, oh, he wanted his in-law. We've seen different governors trying hard to hold on to power or at least influence who the next governor is. What causes this intoxication? Or do you think it's just a dare need to continue what they started? Why do we have to have this repeating itself? I think, first of all, um, it is not true that I had an anointed candidate. Okay. The media chose to believe without investigating what was thrown at it. Okay. Members of my cabinet will confirm repeatedly how they asked me who I wanted and how I kept insisting that the party, must, the candidate must emerge from the primaries right. of the candidate. If I wanted a candidate, it was difficult to conceive that anybody could stop me. Mm. But I recognized that this was a public trust. And my time was done, and I was ready to go anyway. And um, I'd run my race as hard as I could. So waiting one more day, there was nothing else I could usefully add. Mm. And um, I also felt that it was important to allow the system to produce a candidate rather than choosing. Because in all of the cases where people have sort of tried to impose right. their own success, or they've, history has shown they've fallen out. Yeah, right. They've all fallen out. And it is almost true, too, even in your own family business, and you put your son there, his methods of running the company are not exactly going to be your methods. Right. And inevitably, you will fall out. And the brands that have endured, the great brands that have lasted a century and more, have been because they have allowed other influences to come into them. All right, let me go to your relationship. I mean, you, people have asked you this question several times on your relationship with the current governor of Lagos State. And you've been very modest about it. Um, but I'd like to ask you the difference between your, your own system and his own way. Mm. Uh, initially, there was, the, there was the story of, oh, everything Fashola did, he just stopped it. Governor Abadi has stopped it. But the people who he governs are saying, listen, yes, he might have stopped Lagos Homes, or for whatever reason, but there are other projects he's done, the laybys, the electricity, lighting of the entire expressway. So for us, the people, it was a continuation. But the political class of whatever felt that there was still some kind of tension between the two of you. But did that tension exist? And what have you done? to help ease the tension today? There was no tension. You see, I've looked at succession models across the world. Okay. And some of the things that I saw, uh, perhaps a sense of empirehood, if there's such a word. But it was always clear to me that the period of my tenure as governor was a period of a public trust, clearly defined, a four-year term subject to renewal for another four-year term and no more. It was very clear to me that I don't own the state. And the only thing I could morph into was into a senior citizen after that office. And that is what I chose. Now, as a senior citizen with experience, the only thing I could offer the governor was advice, if he sought it. And it was always going to be how to thread the clear, if your advice is not solicited, your time is up. Go quietly into the night. You're interfering. Yeah, right. If your help or your advice is needed, then you intervene. So did you intervene in the case of Samuel? Because we saw you in the last two weeks campaigning for him. Is it that the figures of the presidential were so became, close? It, that's not governance anymore. And let me finish that story. Because we've seen some models, people writing letters, telling their successors how to govern. You don't do that. Mm. It's not a king, kingdom. 
is a public trust. Your time is up. Mm. If you have advice, there are back channels for dealing with that. And we must copy successful models. When last did you see David Cameron telling Theresa May how to manage Brexit? He led the vote. When last did you see Barack Obama telling uh, Trump. Trump how to govern? We must copy those kind of examples. How many times did Mandela interfere in the day-to-day -day governance of South Africa? So, that's one. Intervention in politics. Look, I'm a member of that party. We have evolved and chosen a candidate to fly our flag in the general election. It's a different rule. I go and campaign for our candidate. That's a different thing. In the way, for example, Barack Obama came out to campaign for Democratic candidates against the Republicans in the last midterm election. And after that, it's gone back quietly. Right. So it's, it's a different thing. All of us are members of the same party. Right. Let me ask you this. And I know that primaries can be very, very bitter sibling rivalries. Mm. And they require to, because it's an intra-house dispute. Right. And there can be only one winner. So there needs to be a lot of healing when that happens. Okay. Let's go on a break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Okay. Thanks for staying with us. So, in that interview, I went further to ask uh, him about the government elect of Lagos State and his deputy, Hamzat. And the former governor also shed some light on the ethnic tension in Lagos. Watch this. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Still have with us the Honorable Minister of Power, Housing and Works. Sir, before with the break, we're talking about your relationship with uh, the mm -hmm. current governor, Amadi. And I'm going to ask you this question as a, as a fellow Lagosian. The recent Amadi saga, it took Lagos by storm, and we didn't understand what was going on. The political class said, oh, the governor didn't fulfill his own obligations to the political class. The average Lagosian says, hey, we see this governor. He's working. He, I mean, we see the basic and amenities being provided for us. We see roads are being built. We see investments and hospitals. So what exactly is the issue here? So in your, in your view, what did he do wrong exactly that caused the rift between him and the political class? I think, first of all, um, it's not a question of right and wrong. Okay. Uh, um, I think people must also understand that uh, policies have political consequences. Okay. And the political parties are more perceptive than perhaps members of the public give them credit for. Credit for. So they have an intelligence unit filling the polls and what they like to see in the next election and so on and so forth. So that's as much as I, I, I think uh, is useful for our conversation because I really didn't get involved at that level in the uh, in the goings on uh, because I was also busy mm. in Abuja here. But that said, as the fallouts came, one of the things I was concerned about was that whatever happened, right? We must look beyond the occupier of the office to the office. Okay. That is the office that great Nigerians, some of my very illustrious predecessors held. From Bolaji Johnson, the very first governor, albeit unelected. That was the office that men, Europeans like Carter, Glover held. That is the office that Alaji Jacode held. That is the office that 
Michael Otedola held. Bola Tinumbu held. So nothing must be done to desecrate that office. Right. And whatever differences you have with the holder of the office, that is, the office itself is our big masquerade. Hmm. And holders come and go, and they leave the shroud of the masquerade intact. Hmm. That, that, that was, so and that was the role I tried to play. Hmm. And as, as I said earlier, it's a term of four years, subject to the discretion of the public, whether you get another term. Okay, let me um, ask you a bit about the, the ethnic issues going on in Lagos State. Mm -hmm. During your time, you allegedly, according to the reports, that sent some Igbos back home. And you've said that, listen, that never happened. But um, today, the Igbos in Lagos State are saying they are being intimidated to vote for or to support the ruling party. My question to you, sir, what exactly are the Yorubas scared of? I think that... You know, I see Nigerians, unfortunately, and I cannot apologize for the way other people choose to see themselves. Okay. I see Nigerians first and foremost. But, you know, the point that has perhaps agitated my mind was in 2015, when the former president sought to ethnicize our politics. And long before that, no ethnic group had ever held a consensus meeting to say all of us are voting this way. Right. Even amongst the so-called indigenous Yoruba, Awuri, Eko people, They've never been able to mobilize all of their own into one place. They're always dividing groups. Some want to go with the main party, some want to be. So, but that was a concern at the time. But I think that common sense will prevail. Maturity will prevail. Look, we are far too joined at the hip. So this is a Siamese twin surgery that cannot be undertaken the consequences will be devastated. You know, they normally separate their means twins. You can't separate this one. The consequences will be so devastating that it is unthinkable to even attempt it. And let us just understand those who are playing it. They are playing it for their own self-interest. Hmm. Let me go to the, to the current deputy governor-elect of Lagos State, Hamzat. We hear he's your friend. We hear he was your selection, you brought him <laughs> in, and um, he's fashola boy, and that's the word on the street. Um, tell us about him. We don't, some of us don't know much about him, and you, you seem to trust him. You seem to say he and someone will make a good team. Tell us a bit about the, about the deputy governor-elect. Let me go back to the beginning. Jide Sowolu joined the cabinet when uh, the deputy governor, Femi Pedro, came to government. Okay. And that was in the running to uh, Governor Tinumbu's re-election. So he was appointed by the governor as a special advisor to the then deputy governor. That's a story. Mm. When we won the re-election, Femi joined us from Oando. He had come from the United States. Right. And I was chief of staff. So I had a relationship with many of them, of them, getting things done. How does this place work? My office was like the go-to place. But both of them distinguished themselves very early. They were my, my age in terms of generation type. We were both in our 50s. And so we, we got on. Uh, we just shared the same thing. We all went to school around the same time in different parts right. of the world. A generation just comes together. And so and when I became the governor, I kept both of them and challenged them with very difficult assignments, and they delivered. 2023, we hear you might be running for president. Again, I've given you the yardstick by which to proceed. <laughs> so because if you, know, you don't hear from me, it's it happen. didn't happen. Gotcha. All right. If you don't hear it from me, they, I don't hide. I don't do surreptitious things. Okay. All right. I'm you. driven by clear convictions about what I think is right, and I deal with them. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, 
We'll continue this conversation with the Honorable Minister. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Welcome back. So finally, we discuss updates on its ongoing projects, infrastructure, power, and housing. Stay with us. Welcome back to Your View. We still have with us the Honorable Minister of Power, Works, and Housing. Um, when you were engaged as the Honorable Minister, I know your principal had asked you to focus on four major projects. That's the Lagos Ibano Expressway, the second Niger Bridge, uh, the Abuja um, a stretch up to Zaria, Kaduna, mm -hmm. and also the Lori, Jebba, and uh, Mokwa Road. How is that going, and where are we right now as of 2019? Well, all of those projects are in uh, significant stages of execution. Okay. Work is going on on the Abuja Kanu Highway, work is going on on the Lagos Ibano Expressway work is going on. We finished the first stretch of the Lorin uh, Jeba Road. Uh, work is continuing on the Oyo Obomosho section. We are also expanding from a single lane to a double lane, right. uh, dual carriageway, the Lorin Jeba Road, and extending the dualization all the way to Mokwa. Right. So we're making progress. Right. Lagosians understand that the Apapa Oshodi Expressway is on the way, but I think many people want to know the timelines we're working with to see the completion of this project. It's a 24-month project okay. from when we are awarded in the last quarter, I think, of 2018. Um, that's the projected delivery time. Um, <clears throat> what I can say is that the contracting firm intends to use double gangs or triple gangs to execute and they think that they can finish shorter than 24 months. Uh, for those who use that road currently, you will see that we are already setting out. Around Aswani is solo, you will see red and yellow uh, concrete barriers being laid out, preparing to uh, manage traffic where we build. Mm. Uh, what I know is that most of the production for the materials to be used have already started. Materials have been ordered. Uh, work is going on in batching plants. This is a modern way of construction. Right. So you will see things coming to site when uh, casting is finished. Right. Whilst that is going on, uh, we have also completed works on the Leventis Jora Bridge. Okay. So you will begin to see some relief in the number of trucks you, mm. you used to see on the road currently on the uh, Funcha Williams Western Avenue right. side towards Costain. Mm. And as this construction goes on, as I've told uh, some residents of it, uh, Papa, that it's not when we finish in 24 months that you will see relief. Mm. Relief will be continued yes, okay. as sections of the road uh, are continued. Great. Let me go to issue of housing. You have mm. said that um, currently there are housing projects ongoing in 34 states, which you've said. Mm. And you've also identified the fact that the issue of low housing costs, low cost of housing, affordable mm. housing costs, and also the acceptability. Yeah. Now, I have gone around and I've seen that there are houses well, how do we get these people to take these houses and choose a mode of payment that is conducive for them? How, what, how, what are you, what's your ministry doing to close that gap? Um, it's one of the issues I want to address uh, at an event I'll be speaking very soon. And uh, I, I think that uh, the housing problem is perhaps the biggest problem we are dealing with in this ministry. Right. Uh, and it's not because it is difficult to build a house, but it is important to have consensus right. around what the problem is. You know, in power, we have consensus about what exactly. the problem is. Right. People want more energy. Yeah. People want more meters. They want 
estimated billions to store. So we, we can define the problem. We haven't, as a people, properly defined that problem housing. of housing. Right. And people have promised what is impossible. I've heard people say they will build a million houses. I don't know any nation that has built a million houses in one year. Right. And everybody I've asked, they said, somebody said, I said, did you see? <laughs> it's not what somebody right. said. Now, the other problem in housing is, as you have pointed out, affordability, which I've addressed, uh, acceptability, yeah. which I've also addressed. Is this the type of house I, I want? want? Is even where I want it to exactly. be? Exactly. Before we begin to match the cost to my resources and my earnings mm. in order to make it affordable. And is the expectation of the end user also realistic? Uh -huh. If you leave school and within one year you want to live in the most prime area of your city, right. whether it's in the GRE, you don't want to go through a property ladder and move from the outskirts into the center of town as you progress and your earnings improve. Those are matters around which we have to have mm. a national consensus. But one of the things we're looking at, which is quite interesting, is the number of empty houses across Nigeria in every major city that I've been to. And I want to see if I can get all of the professionals, estate value surveyors to help us collect a data mm. that actually determines how many of those houses are empty, where they are, why they are empty, which people want them. Right. And can we develop it? I have something at the back of my okay. mind right. uh, yeah, we'll that I think can be, can be useful. Okay, let's move yeah. into the issue of power. Um, yeah. We've talked about deregulating the distribution of power, especially the distribution of meters, actually. Yeah. And um, I think we all got excited last year when NERC said, oh, yes, now private companies can yes. begin to be licensed to assemble and distribute. Mm -hmm. But it's been a year now. We are yet to see people actually... Um, doing this job of distribution, private sector? I'm happy at least we're communicating with you and hopefully from you to a larger audience. Uh, that is policy decision. Before policy translates to results, okay. they take time. And even in the organization that you work, TVC, you have policies. Right. And before they translate to results, there's a gestation, there's a takeoff, and otherwise, we will repeat the mistakes we are trying to solve. Okay, so, when so we've licensed them. Okay. Now they need to work with discos. Okay. Where are your consumers? So consumers too cannot hide. Right. So some people legitimately want meters. Some people don't want to be seen. Mm. And they want to connect. Gotcha. Okay. And that is the next phase okay. we're dealing with. We still had a meeting about it this week. So everything we commit to, we are monitoring right. and managing so that we can s deliver the results that we see and that the public expects. All right. I know you have a 10-year plan. Um, you, you told us that your administration has developed a 10-year plan. To achieve what exactly? What yes. should we see in 10 years' time? You know, we do have a 10-year plan in general. Okay. Uh, what I think I said was that the kind of expectations that we want to see across Nigeria usually takes about a decade okay. to happen. But you will begin to see the signs as they evolve. Within my own ministry, I can tell you, for example, that after four years, or almost four years, going to what we have campaigned about, mm. the next level, what you will begin to see from my ministry in power, for example, is Continued incremental power, you will see that. Right. In some places now, we will be able to deliver steady power. Right. Okay. In some places. In some places. And, 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 and for right. example, now in places like Kebi, right. in places like uh, Damaturu, Meduguri, people are getting almost 24 hour power. Hmm. In some places, it is 18. In some places, it is 5. Some people yet don't have. Right. Now, how do we do that? We're completing a few power plants, like the Kashimbila, Kaduna power plant, Afan power plant, um, and a couple of others mm. will complete this year. So that will increase power. 
What is the problem that increased power imposes? It imposes the challenge of distribution. We have a distribution expansion program okay. uh, where we are injecting, we have approval to spend, I need to be careful, we have approval of the Federal Executive to spend 72 billion naira as our own investment in the discourse to help supply distribution equipment, meters, uh, 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 transformers, mm. breakers, ring main units, new lines, and all of those things that inhibit our ability to evacuate about 2,000 megawatts, which we expect to also increase when we complete more power plants. As the Ninth Assembly is constituted now, and um, your party obviously has majority, what are some of the laws that will enable your work better? For example, you've always complained about the issue of procurement, the process. Uh, the people have complained about the fact that certain rules should be state-owned, not federal-owned. There have been issues of, oh, should it be in the, this list or that list? In your own view, what are the laws that would help your work easier to deliver to the people? Well, the procurement law is one law, uh, and it's important for a nation that has to urgently renew, replace, and build infrastructure to do so very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. Because global economic dynamics are not static. And therefore, within the framework of what we can see, right. we need to act decisively, shorten procurement time, shorten procurement processes, so that we can commit quickly and do with today's money what today's money can buy. Right. Because some of the projects we are completing now were projects started yesterday, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, when the exchange rate was not this high, when the value of the Naira was a lot higher, mm. but which is finishing at today's money. Right. That's a very important matter around which... Uh, but apart from legislation, there must also, I hope that in the Knights Assembly, we will have a consensus about some things we can no longer afford to play with. We cannot politicize those things. We must have a consensus across party lines. Right. And one of those things is that we must urgently address national infrastructure. Hmm. That is what gives everybody relief. Hmm. More power, more rail, more road networks, more airports. Nobody should toy with those things. Hmm. Anybody who has any other special projects must seek to achieve them without compromising those ones. Those okay. ones. Thank you very much for this opportunity to talk to you. Thank you. Um, that's all we can take on the show. Have a fabulous day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.